Hi guys, welcome back to my XVS guide. Now I'm gonna review Makina Abilities Awakening, and he was my yeah one of my favorite breakers on the past. And now they have improved his main weakness. But before talking about that, let's see his stats awakening. Okay, so he gets three stats awakening. The first one is this. Spirit plus 30% becomes Dual Blade Mastery. So this will improve his offensive power tremendously. But this may sound crazy. If you want to have more durable breakers, then maybe it's better to leave it on here. Okay, because that means he gets extra 30% spirit. So in the end, if you leave this alone, you will have 80% spirit. Yes, you may say, oh, it's not worth it. Like I said, it sounds crazy, right? But yeah, 30% maybe can save you. But again, if you think that's useless, by all means, awaken this, okay? Because his offensive is maybe quite decent for hybrid, not hybrid, I mean hybrid, break, and offensive characters and the second passive he gets is this so he gets extra health and attack boost which is nice okay because that means after you have awakened all his passives this and this he has 150% attack boost well pretty decent for a breakers and he also has 80% health so he is not squishy Okay, he is quite durable as a breaker. This stop resist is also nice. Let's say if you don't have stop resist buffer on your party and you want to build a party with all stop resistance. So you don't need to cast that stop resist buff using Luxme. Okay, nice. And the last, this will get give him 60% true dual wield boost. So in the end, he has 100% true dual wield boost. So I can say that his passive and stats are on par with top tier attackers. Okay, 150% attack only, yeah, 20% lower than Aldor King Rain. And yeah, 100% true dual build. It is the same amount like what you got from Warrior of Light Barge. Okay, so pretty decent stats, but what about his abilities? So for his ability awakening, the first one is this. Element Eager. So this is the strongest non setup ability he has. So this get five times damage modifier. That means you get five times on this and five times on the eight times. So in the end, it will deals 18.2 times damage per cast because it's through dual wheel characters. You are gonna deal 36.4 times. Whoa, that's quite good for a breaker. Okay, and this skill also in peril 100% ice and lightning resist and 120% fire resist. So, yeah, pretty good in peril because it is spammable, especially if you pair him with Warrior of Light Bards. Warrior of Light Bards is one of the best absolute mirror of equity users, and the main weakness of Warrior of Light Bards is his in peril limited on win element so by pairing warrior of like bards with someone like Bukina, you will able to handle that weakness okay and for breaks there are two breaks awakening he gets and i must say they are quite cheap for the effects okay you don't need to use lots of pure chris only one pure chris so yeah really he is really friendly for newbie players for his awakening, I mean. Okay, so before it only breaks seventy percent. Where is it? Yeah, this one only seventy percent and only lasts for one turn. That is suck because that means he is locked into one action. But now it lasts for two turns. So on normal turns, you can switch between Stunning Slash and Sivun Sword. So yeah, you can get 75% attack, magic, defense, spirit, break to 
enemy. But again, you are gonna be locked. Okay, but that's only until you manage to fill your limit burst. His limit burst is pretty decent. 79% breaks. Yes, I know it is still lower than Adventure Log Limit Burst upgraded version. I mean, because yeah, 84%, six, um, yeah, five percent difference. Maybe not that much. Okay, and yeah, the best thing about this is it only requires you 24 LB crystals. So let's say you have an not an okay, you have. Abilities and equipment that increase LB regen, you can almost guarantee to use this every two turns. Okay, so guaranteed 79% breaks for you. And also, without LB regen, you also don't need to worry because he has one LB regen per turn, yeah, and 100% partial LBP rate. So, simply equip him with dagger with rare ability and give him faster LP fuel rate buff on the battle and you can spam his LP on the battle unless of course you fight against Igaian because Igaian LP drops kinda suck okay only the main body and talking about Igaian he is not a good character to use against Igaian because his breaks only affect one enemy so yeah if you fight multiple tough enemies don't use Machina, use Krilla, okay? And that's it for his breaks. Now let's talk a look about his, this, Awakening Class 2. So this will upgrade your Rust Blade, okay? So your Rust Blade now is really, really improved because now they, now it can chain with Absolute Mirror of Equity. Back then, Rust Blade is totally trash because it is unchainable. 10 hits if I'm not mistaken. Wait, wait. Yes, this... Uh, no, it's still 8 hits but... Meh, not chainable. So this is really huge upgrade. And... This gonna deal about... 48 times damage per cast. Because you get... Um, 4.25 times damage modifier boost. So that means it deals 12 times damage with 50% ignore defense, so 24 times per cast, 48 times damage per turn. Quite decent. So like I said, if you want to awaken this into this chain damage modifier cap, it's perfectly understandable. But again, if you only use him as a breaker, not better with offensive, then it's better to stop on this, okay? And 48 times is quite decent, okay? For your info that Pyroglacial last well, maximum damage output per turn is 58, and Pyroglacial cannot break the enemies. So only 10 times damage modifier difference per turn, not bad because, yeah, he is hybrid attacker and breaker but compared to adventure look oh please adventure look is the new breaker so it's not it's not i mean how to say that okay it's not good to compare new character to old awakening characters of course adventure look gonna be gonna be better because his maximum damage output per turn is 82.5 times Okay, now I think that's all you need to know about the comparison, okay, between the breakers. Krilla is still the best for AoE breaks, okay, but Machina is not bad breakers, okay. He is worth to be used on today's standard, especially if your strongest attacker is still uh, Warrior of Like Bards, because Absolute Mirror of Equity, while it is good, the games the games is kind of leaving this chaining family okay now ffbe moves toward bolting strike and um, stardust rate so absolute mirror of equity it's kind of sad to see you goes away it will become the final in the end
Okay, so for party building example, like I said, pair him with warrior of like bards because yeah, he's the strongest absolute mirror of PT chainer at this point. And the best part is warrior of like bards is also dual wield character who doesn't learn triple cast. So that means they can chain perfectly. If you use someone, let's say triple caster, let's say Zeno, then Zeno last absolute mirror of equating move not gonna be chain and probably can mess up with your chain. But with parts that won't happen. Okay, and with those two, you have four slots left. You can use two tankers, two healers, or one tanker, one buffer, or yeah one buffer one healer go ahead with your need but for chaining and offensive purpose you have handled it okay so in the end he's good breakers at this point maybe i can say that for single target okay for single target he's the second best breaker at this point the first is of course adventurer lock the second is machina because yes this 75 percent spammable and 70 9% actually if you only care about 79% he may be even better than adventurer lock because adventurer lock 79% breaks only last for one turn okay and please don't complain to me okay but adventurer lock can break all enemies yes you are correct but i have said for single target for aoe you don't want to bring machina okay so i think that's all you need to know about machina thank you very much for watching press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more final fantasy perfect vs guide bye bye guys